Sharon, thanks for joining us today. Is this something you ever thought would become a reality? Uh, no, it's nice to join you today, Brittany, and I did not ever think I would see this in my lifetime. I've been fighting for it for many, many decades, and I've had conversations with uh, various mem uh, ministers of Indian Affairs over the years. Uh, at my last count, it was 16 that I've dealt with. That's one six that I've dealt with over uh, fighting for these women's equality, indigenous women's equality issues. And I said to my friend when Carolyn Bennett said in uh, June that she was going to declare these last two sections in force before the election and everybody was cheering and I simply said, I'll believe it when I see it. Can you tell us about the moment that you heard the news? Well, I was driving home. I, I'd been in Ottawa and I was driving home in my car and my lawyer on the McIver case phoned me and said, Sharon, they've declared the sections in force today. And I, I was just speechless. I didn't know what to say. I, I, I said, uh, are you sure? And they said, yes, uh, I've looked at it and I'm sure. So I was absolutely speechless and of course, really relieved that we didn't have to go through another uh, government in order to push these, these sections forward. That being said, do you feel like this is the end of your battle? No, no, not at all. What we've been taking care of in the for the last uh, 34 years since the uh, Bill C-31 charter required the government to take the discrimination out, what we've been dealing with is the residual discrimination, the discrimination that they left in there uh, in 1985 and the di ongoing discrimination that they put in there when they amended uh, the bill in uh, 2011 with the MacIver amendments, they put in that uh, section or the uh, 1951 cutoff. They added it in you know, eight, year, eight years ago, eight and a half years ago. And so those are the ones that we've been concentrating on to take care of the people that are living today and have been discriminated against, and as a result have not been able to uh, have their right recognized or exercise that right. So that's not the end of it. We've got a whole new era where post-1985, what they did is that they, it's, a, it's a truly termination document. What it will do over the years, because they've got the, the two-parent requirement for recognition for Indian status, that eventually they will uh, we will have no Indians left. They, what they will be doing, or what they've done, and it's in place, and we've been fu uh, fighting this rear guard battle, basically to bring everybody who uh, is alive today that comes from people who are discriminated against, to put them back into the pool, put them back into our community. Now, in the future, we've got to fight over the, tr the truly termination document meaning that after 1985, uh, the government made it clear that you had to have two Indian parents in order to ha have status. If you had only one Indian parent, then you couldn't have status. So that's, that's a whole new fight. But the, the cleaning up of the old Indian Act is basically... Hey. Five that we need to, that taken care of. There's a couple of things left that don't impact a lot of people, uh, but uh, it's not, the battle is nowhere near over. Well, thank you for your input, and it, it sounds like um, future generations will be continuing your fight. Uh, and that is all the time that we have for today, though. Thank you for joining us, Sharon. Thank you for having me. Have a good day.